Hello everybody, uh, it's time for my annual water heater maintenance and I just thought I'd share that process with you all. Uh, first off, this is going to be performed on an electric water heater, so if you have a gas powered water heater, this is not the video for you. Uh, secondly, I wanted to share with you briefly why I even started doing my annual maintenance. Uh, I was discovering in the mornings that I was running out of hot water really quickly. Uh, upon doing my research, I discovered the problem was with a uh, heating element and a buildup of sediment at the bottom of the water heater. So uh, let's take a look at how we could resolve those problems. So the first step is to simply turn off the power to the water heater. So here we have the water heater and uh, before we do anything else we want to make sure that there's no power going to the water heater which means we're going to have to get through this panel here and uh, in my case I have the strapping blocking my access to the panel so I'm going to have to take the strap off as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we have the strapping out of the way, I go ahead and remove this panel. Now that we have this panel off, we're going to go ahead and confirm that there's no uh, electricity coming in. So we're going to do that with a multimeter. Uh, I have it set here for alternating current um, at 600 uh, because I'm anticipating uh, 240 coming in right here. So we have our multimeter and there's going to be our two leads on either side. So we're going to touch the probes, and as you can see, there's nothing coming in. Let me show you what I'm talking about in case you had trouble seeing what I was doing there. Here's our wiring coming in off the top, uh, one left, one to the right. And again, we're touching these two contacts here. And as you can see, uh, nothing's coming in right there. So we're all good. All right, now that we've verified there's no uh, power going to the heater itself, uh, we can go ahead and turn off the water. Uh, so there's a little bit of a tight squeeze up here. This is a small space, but uh, there is the sh red shot off valve right back in that corner over there. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that off right now. Next thing we're going to want to do is uh, start draining our water heater. And so we're going to need our spigot down here at the bottom. And... Uh, I have a small hose here uh, that'll get me from the spigot uh, to the drain, which is a couple feet away from uh, the bottom of the water heater. So all you got to do is thread that in, put the other end of the hose into our drain, and we are good to go. Although we don't have the handle here, uh, all you got to do is use a screwdriver in the same manner, turning counterclockwise to open. And there we go. Now that we've opened the valves to the drain on the tank, you may have noticed that the water is only coming out as a trickle. The reason for this is because there's no air getting into our system. To allow air into the tank, we're going to need to open the pressure release valve. So here is the pressure release valve. Go ahead and push that up. So that sound is air entering the tank, and you should also have noticed that the water flow is substantially increased. You're going to need to hold that pressure release valve open until the water flow out the hose substantially decreases. Once it's significantly decreased, you should be all right to take out the upper heating element. So there's the water going down the drain. Be careful, it can be scalding hot, so make sure you're not getting it on yourself or spilling it anywhere else. All right, now that the water is slowed to a trickle, we're okay to go ahead and um, remove this heating element. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is remove the leads. So let's go ahead and do that. And just move these wires off to the side and out of your way. Okay, now we can go ahead and remove this. Uh, I'm going to be using this wrench, but uh, they do sell special um, adapters that you can use. I believe attach it to um, a, a socket wrench and you could use that as well if you want to buy that. But I happen to have one of these big boys so we'll go and use this guy. And that's about it. No water's leaking out so we're okay. 
And there's our heating element. I don't know if you can see there, but it's uh, very encrusted in lime, and that's one of the reasons why we're having issues. So our second heating element is behind this panel, and you can see I have another issue with the strap, so let's go ahead and, and uh, get that strap removed. All right, now that we have the strap out of the way, uh, now we can go ahead and do like we did before. Loosen the top screw, take the panel off, get these guys out of the way, take the cover off, And as long as you've uh, turned off the power above, you're not going to have any problems with the power down here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and undo these guys. Move these wires out of the way. And let's get this guy out of here. Okay, now here's the hard part, I'm trying to get a shot inside to like show you what we're looking at. So there we go, all that white is the sediment that we're trying to get out. Now that we're ready to start vacuuming, let's take a look at the actual vacuum we're going to be using. Uh, this is a wet dry vac that I bought at the local hardware store. Uh, when I bought it, it came with one of these filters, which is for a dry application. But we're going to need to be using a filter, a filter designed for wet application. Uh, in addition to the filter, I also got a couple of tools. Uh, this is a universal tool adapter that allows me to put a couple of the different attachments on. This is a smaller gauge uh, vinyl tubing, uh, and this is going to be what I use for the, to finish the job with the finer details, get some of the corners. And then this is a larger one that just barely fits in through the opening uh, that I'll use to start with to get some larger volume out. And all I do is slide that on there. And now I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Well, now that I have it opened, uh, it's looking like it's not piled as high as it's been some other times, the sediment that is on the inside. So I won't be using this larger tube today. I don't think I'll be needing that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and go straight for the smaller one. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's get this going. All right, so as you can see, uh, the technique that I've got going is I'm holding the light down through the uh, down through the lower hole for the elements down here, so I can shine that in. And at the same time, I'm looking in through this top hole right here, so I can see where the where the tube's going. And it seems to be uh, it seems to be a good combination, and it's working out pretty well. So let's keep going. Be careful and keep an eye out because uh, you can get blockages. Some of these pieces are too big to fit into the hose, so just make sure you're not getting plugged up, or if you are, you're removing those plugs. Uh, so you're actually still keep keep doing work. All right, let's keep going. All right, so we're getting pretty close. Uh, I did end up using. Uh, the bigger gauge hose. Uh, I was having trouble reaching the, the back edges, um, the back corners of the water heater, uh, so that's really helped me to get that back reach. Um, but because the, um, the tube does end up taking most, or really the whole space, it's in there pretty solid, um, it makes lighting it a lot more difficult. So in order to be able to see what I'm doing, it's kind of right up in here where you have to hold the, the light pretty close to your eye, get the right angle, and then you can see just barely what you're doing. But this motion really makes a huge difference. Uh, so you got to really stay with it. 
So I'm going to keep going just about there. All right, all done. So let's go ahead and put that back together. In case you haven't done so already, it's time to uh, turn this valve off, turn it clockwise to shut it off. Now we could unthread this again. Be careful, there's still going to be some water in it. So make sure all that water drains into your drain when you undo it. Okay, we are good to go ahead and start putting our heating elements in. So let's get those going. And then tighten it up a little bit. And let's go ahead and do our wiring for this one. And then put our guard back on. Put the wires down. Get our plate. Screw it in. And now, our strapping. Now that our lower heating element's done, we do the same thing for our upper. Oh, I should say, by the way, uh, there is a rubber o-ring right here, a little washer. Uh, make sure that's there and uh, in good health, because that's what's keeping the water in. And if that's missing or falling apart, uh, you're going to run into some leaking, which is not going to be good. Okay, now let's tighten her up. Let's get our wires connected. And then our protective plate. Then our panel. And then our strapping, upper strapping. All right, now that we have everything closed up, uh, we're okay to turn the water back on, so let's go ahead and do that. Awesome, now it just leaves us one last thing to do, which is turn the uh, breaker back on. So let's go ahead and do that. I wanted to show you uh, one important thing and that is uh, that has to do with the aerators on faucets. The aerator is this little screen that uh, screws on at the faucet, and uh, through this process, we're kicking up a lot of that sediment. And if you can see that, there's a lot of grit that's come out of pipes and blocked up our faucets. So if you're having trouble with faucets working, uh, that's why they're clogged up with the sediments. So you're going to have to take the aerators off. Rinse them off. And put them back in. And now we're good to go. Uh, you might also want to run your water for a while because it might uh, come out brown or yellow uh, initially. So run the water, let it clean up and clear up, and then you're good to go.